Hello, um, I'm Paul Kinnett. Um, my day job is as a publisher, small publisher. With my brothers, we do lots of publishing on cycling around New Zealand. Um, and what I'm talking about today is my hobby, which is to take old laptop batteries, like this, from old school batteries, uh, laptops that had fat, um, fat cells in them, as opposed to um, the new thinner batteries that you get in Mac and everything else these days. We take those, we pull them apart to reveal the cells inside. We pull the cells apart and um, charge them up, test them to see how good they are. Um, and take all the good ones and assemble them into bricks, bricks like this, um, of lots of, lots of good cells in wired in parallel. And then you take a whole bunch of those bricks and wire those in series to get a large battery um, that you could, um, this would be part of a, a battery that you could use to run your house. Um, and then there's other things you can do with them as well. Uh, so that's the, that's the quick um, rundown. So what I'll do now, what I was hoping to do was actually talk and open batteries at the same time, but that requires someone to hold the mic for me. Can I get a volunteer? And I, I will open batteries as I talk. Um, so, you probably have to go closer. So, back in the old days when batteries were, uh, laptops were fatter, um, they all had these kind of cells, which are known as 18650s, that's a pair of them, and um, these are the same format cells that are in a Tesla Model S, um, although they use a slightly better chemistry than these old laptop ones. Um, and so these are currently made in the billions every year. Um, these days they're not really used in laptops anymore, they're used in drills, and um, anything portable that has power is probably got 18650s. Uh, E-bikes is another good use for, for um, this format battery. So, um, so what you do when you get hold of these, oh, oh. Um, first of all you have to find some of these. And um, the usual technique for finding these is either go to an IT recycler, and there's one in Seaview, or you go to your friendly local computer shop and say, oh, do you have any any of these floating around? And um, so I go to my local computer shop once a month, and he's got a few in a box that people have handed in because nobody knows what to do with them. Um, the IT recycler usually collects them, and um, eventually they either sell them to China where they get stripped down. In China, interestingly enough, they'll, they'll take your old laptop batteries, they'll strip it down, they'll peel off the green plastic, and then they'll uh, heat shrink brand new plastic on it that says uh, Ultrafire 9000 milliamp hour battery, and then they'll sell it back to you. Um, and it's crazy but true. Um, so, one of the current limitations of 18650s is the maximum you can get capacity-wise is about 3,600 milliamp hours. Um, and if you ever see an ad online for a battery with more than 3,600 milliamp hours, so four, five, six, the highest I've seen is 9,000, um, anything higher than 3,600 is a, is a fake. Um, and then the other dead giveaway is they're you know, surprisingly cheap. Um, whereas if you buy a, a real new one, uh, they're surprisingly expensive. Um, so you go to your IT recycler. When I started doing this a couple of years ago, the IT recycler had this enormous box of them, didn't know what to do with them. And I said, oh, can I, 
can I take those off your hands? And he said, oh, yes, please. Um, so I got a whole, I got about 400 of them for free. And I made some YouTube videos about the process of what I'm doing. And uh, so now there's a whole bunch of other people doing the same thing. And there's a, a market for these, so I can't buy them. Can't get them for free anymore. They're, um, they're usually sort of one, two, up to five dollars um, each now for the laptop batteries. So you find yourself some laptop batteries, you harvest the cells. So the typical approach is to crack them open like this with a nice pair of blunt pliers. And at this point, you either get very strong hands or lots of cuts. And so that's the cells. And there's a little um, circuit board here, which is desperately trying to protect the cells from being damaged um, and to protect you from them exploding. And they normally don't explode. Um, if you try extremely hard, you can get them to explode. And there's lots of videos on YouTube of people successfully achieving that. Um, I've never had one explode. I have had some that I mistreated, um, vent, which is, is pretty disturbing. Um, inside a, a, a lithium-ion battery, there's um, some of the chemistry in it is um, quite volatile, and um, given a bit of heat, they will catch fire. So when the, if the battery short circuits, it heats up, and what can happen is uh, it can vent, and the heat ignites the vent, and then you've got a nice little jet engine. Um, and so the batteries can fly around if you're super unlucky. Um, so you, you just cut the battery management system off, because sadly nobody's really found any decent way of dealing with these. Um, so what this does is it talks to the laptop, and the laptop talks to the battery, uh, and they agree whether or not the, the battery is worth, is good enough to run the battery. And a few years ago, 10 years ago, there were a whole bunch of laptop fires. So the manufacturer started making these um, very intolerant of any problems. What that means is that there's lots of laptop batteries floating around with very minor problems. So when I do this harvesting thing, uh, I end up with about 60-70% of good cells. Um, and depending on how fussy you are, you can either use all of those. Um, what I tend to do is I test them, and if they are kind of middling, if they're okay capacity, then I will either sell them on trade me to someone, someone else, or I'll take them back to the IT recycler, who eventually will ship them over to Europe where they get um, ground down and the, now all the um, chemistry gets um, reused. There is, a, there is a guy who's about to set up a, a lithium ion recycling um, company in Sydney. And basically they take these and they feed them into a shredder and then they process the, the mush that comes out and try and separate all the good bits. So um, there's, there's a couple of ways of processing them from this point on. Most people separate the cells into individual batteries and then uh, they will charge them. And I, I've made myself a nice little charger here out of cheap um, charging modules that you get in off China. Um, you can get these little, uh, I think they're 30 cents each, um, charging modules. So you charge them all up. The ones that don't charge are usually bad and you discard those. The ones that do charge up, you then use a device like this to discharge and measure the capacity. And then that's the real, the real crux of the whole process. Um, this is kind of time consuming. So um, 
Some people prefer to buy brand new cells, um, but you can buy a whole lot, whole lot of these and do them all in parallel. Um, so you, you work out your capacity. There are numbers on these, on all of these cells, and you can look up what the original capacity was, and then you work out, compare that to what you measured, and if they are close, then you know you've got a really good cell. If it's half what it was when it was new, you know you've got a cell that's on its way out. Um, so that's, that's a good process. Um, once you, thank you very much. So one of the next steps that um, once you've tested a whole bunch of cells, so maybe a thousand cells, um, you get rid of the ones you don't want, then before you put them into groups, you need to sort them. And there's a lovely open source tool called repacker.com, which takes all the capacity numbers. So you you write on each cell what the capacity is. You feed all that into repacker.com. And what it does is a nice little um, software trick called simulated annealing. Has anyone, you've heard of simulated annealing? What a marvelous trick. Um, it's a fantastic sorting um, routine for taking a large set of numbers and sorting them into groups in which the sum of the numbers is as similar as possible across the groups. So what that means is you end up with seven groups that all have almost exactly the same um, net capacity, so that the whole system is nicely balanced. Uh, there's an um, open source software writer who produced that. Um, it was a lovely thing. Uh, so you, you sort them, then you solder them all up, and um, in my case, I've 3D printed these um, battery holders. Um, I've got a 3D printer, so I've designed these custom battery holders. You can get um, other battery holders that you, that you clip together to make big monster packs. Uh, I like doing them this size because they're nice and handy. Um, if you're doing a, a whole house and you're wanting to build like a a 20 or 40 kilowatt hour um, system, then you might uh, build a bigger pack that is like 100 cells in parallel. So you have these big monster uh, groups and you stick those in, in, um, in series. And normally you put them on a wall somewhere. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of people who are building these do-it-yourself power walls. Um, and if you're interested in finding out more about how other people are doing it, there's a website called uh, secondlifestorage.com. Uh, there's a discussion forum and people posting pictures and so on. There's a Facebook group and there's a whole bunch of people doing YouTube videos as well. Um, I'm on YouTube if you search for Paul Kibbett. Um, you'll find me. Um, then the, ne the next thing that you need to consider are ways of mitigating the safety risks. So um, there is a reasonable amount of energy in these, and if things went wrong, they would go quite spectacularly wrong. Um, so one of the things that we do is copy a trick from Tesla, where we have a fuse from every single cell to our bus bars. And um, that's one of those weird innovations that Tesla does because they're using these single cells. Um, pretty much every other EV maker uses much larger cells and they don't need to go to that, um, to that bother. So you, you fuse every single cell, um, then you add yourself a, a battery management system of some sort. And I've got a tiny one here. Um, there's another one. There's another one floating around here somewhere. Um, so that's one from an e-bike. Um, so you can buy these online reasonably cheaply. Um, you can get them larger and smaller depending on how, how big and grunty your, your system is. Um, and then you, ideally, you either put this little on the wall in a shed away from your house because, God forbid, anything does go wrong, you don't want to burn down your house. 
And um, sadly, there was a guy a couple of years ago in Timaru who built one of these and had it in his house, and something didn't go right, um, and his house burnt down. Uh, so I got mine in a shed behind my garage. Um, it's actually a, a, a server box in a shed um, behind the garage. Um, then what I do for this system is I've got it um, charging from a solar panels on the garage, and um, then it runs a big inverter which runs uh, half my house. Um, and so that's a, the whole big power wall scenario. The other thing that you can do with recycling laptop cells is all kinds of little things you can do. Um, for example, yeah. oh, here we go. So this is just three cells stuck together. Um, and can I get my my system to be? Um, so my my son was eleven, wanted to go to the school dance, and wanted to have something fancy. So um, of course I had to give him an LED dance costume. Um, and so I just um, strapped three recycled batteries. Um, then these are also really good for um, Arduino projects and robots, anything that you want to move because they're really nice and energy dense. Um, and they're good for e-bikes. Um, quite a few people use them for e-bike, cheap e-bike batteries. And then, um, how's my time? I'm probably running low, aren't I? You probably are. Okay. Um, and then, so the, like, having built that, um, the, the, th the project that I'm working on at the moment is building a second battery for my Nissan Leaf electric car so that I can extend the range on that. And that's a doable project. Um, the only interesting thing, so with my, my house power wall, it runs at about 27 volts, um, which is considered moderately safe. Um, whereas the Nissan Leaf, when it's fully charged, runs at 400 volts, which is a bit more daunting, safety-wise. Um, but nothing, nonetheless, I'm going to give that a go. Um, <coughs> and my goal is to uh, add another 50% to my range um, by using recycled laptop and e-bike batteries. Uh, any questions? So, uh, so it varies. Sometimes you'll open them and you'll see rust, and that's usually uh, a complete write-off. Sometimes you'll open it and it's as if it's brand new, and sometimes they are. Um, quite often, old stock ends up at an IT recycler, and then sometimes you'll get four out of the six are good, um, and it all completely varies. In terms of the success rate, it's sort of 60, 70% good sales. Hmm? Yeah, the casing is um, ABS, and I take that back to the um, to the um, recyclers. So hopefully they, they do something with it. But yes, it's a don't know what else to do with that. Um, and the, the little BMS boards, they go back to the IT recycler and they get sent off to China where I'm not sure what happens to them. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Okay.